How do you make a gun lance? Well, that's easy. All you need is a gun, duct tape, and a lance. Now shut up, it's time to learn how to gun lance. The gun lance is without a doubt the most American weapon in the entire Monster Hunter repertoire. Capcom has paid homage to the traditional American weapon design process by taking a sufficiently lethal weapon in the lance and stapling a Glock on top of it. Now, many of you are probably thinking, Ahmad, can we use the lessons we learned in the lance video here? And while I appreciate the dedication to watching all my cringy material, no. You see, the gun lance does have the capacity to do thrusting attacks by pressing this button, just like the regular lance, but this is literally bringing a knife to a gunfight. You see, if you press this button, you unlock the mechanical marvel that is shelling. No, not like that. You'll notice in the top left corner of the screen that you have a tracker for a lot of bits and bobs, or for the more technical observer, we have bullets and bigger bullets. Every time you press the shelling button, you will lose a bullet. Tragic, I know. Repeat this cycle enough and you'll run out of bullets and face the classic American dilemma. That being, if there are no bullets, how can we ever hope to end gun violence? Truly a question for the generation. But fear not, you barely literate munitions holder. I've got someone who will assist in teaching the multiple ways you can remedy this problem. Say hello to Patriot Billy. Hello. Billy. You really do represent everything America stands for in that get up. Truth, justice, and a crippling collapse of the American education system resulting in a pervasively ignorant and intolerable populace. Oh, uh, shut up. In order to remedy our ammo problem, we press this button and this button at the same time to do a reload. However, there are two different animations that occur depending on what your previous action was, and they both reload in different ways. If you did an attack before you pressed your reload button, you will do a quick reload, which will only reload your bullets, but not your big bullets. If you did nothing beforehand, you will do a full reload, which will reload both your bullets bullets and your big bullets. You can see even the reload system is inspired by the classic American economic philosophy. Namely, if you do something, you actually acquire less resources, whereas if you do nothing, you acquire more resources. Land of the free, home of the brave, sit on my ass till I get paid. Worm stakes, aka the big bullets, are a specialized payload that you inject into the monster by either pressing this button three times or pressing this button whenever you do a sweep attack. What the worm stake does is controlled by which switch skill you have selected, so we'll cover that in the switch skill section of the vid. Are those rapid consecutive hits? Why is every goddamn weapon fucking weave weapon? The sweeping attack I mentioned previously is reached by executing your full burst combo. In order to initiate your full burst combo, you start by performing a rising slash, which is executed by pressing these two buttons at the same time with your weapon out or forward on the analog stick in this button while your weapon is sheathed. After executing the rising slash, you will then press this button, which will slam your lance into the ground. When you slam your lance into the ground, you can press this button to discharge all your bullets into the monster. Then follow up the discharge with this button to do your wide sweep. From here, you can either do a quick reload and recycle back into your full burst combo, or you can activate your worm stake like we discussed previously by pressing this button. If you press this button, you'll raise your shield and offer yourself some protection, but more importantly, enable yourself to press these two buttons at the same time while your shield is up and activate Wyvern Fire. Wyvern Fire is an attack where you charge a big attack at a monster before it decides to fuck off, allowing you to feel really stupid for missing an attack. Thanks, Obama. When Wyvern Fire is used, it goes on cooldown, which is displayed in the top left corner of the screen. And those are all the basic maneuvers. But before we move into the switch skill category, let's talk about the different shelling types available for the weapon. The gun lance has wide, long, and normal shelling available. Wide gun lances provide commentary on America's battle with obesity. It also uses the regular shelling button to do damage. The long gun lance focuses on teaching the user a strong understanding of how credit works by charging your shells. And the normal gun lance, it just focuses on beating the shit out of lizards with a stick and using the full burst combo to do damage. This is the core of the gun lance, and it is from this foundation that you will build your great free nation. Billy, hit us with a rousing inspirational speech. Uh, I shot a dragon. Fuck yeah. All this freedom, it's coursing through my body. I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Happy 4th of July! 
What? It's Thanksgiving? Oh. Well then, let's all take a pilgrimage over to the like and subscribe section of the video. These videos are helping to fill my need to buy silly costumes, and if you've been having a laugh, a like and subscribe will help go a long way. Also, there's a Discord where you can hunt with me and Billy, so go join that shit. Sunbreak gave each weapon access to switch skills, which are customizable loadouts that impact certain parts of your weapon's moveset, or grant you access to cool, flashy moves. This first skill is one of those cool, flashy moves. In fact, most of the weapon moves for the Gunlance are pretty dang cool. Your first choice is between Charge Shelling and Blast Dash. Both of these abilities alter the way that holding this button behaves. Charge Shelling empowers your, well, shelling. No, not that either. You'll know that you're charging your shells when the tip of your spear sets itself on fire. When you release, you'll notice that your shell has done more damage. This shelling style is directly empowered by gun lances that use the long shelling type. You know, it really is cool to see more weapons making use of this charging mechanic. These fools simply try to replicate, but none can match your power, darling. Oh, sorry guys, I think I blacked out there for a second. Anyways, contrast this with Blast Dash, which throws caution to the wind by using a shell to propel yourself at whatever direction you're facing. Blast Dash will consume one bullet in your magazine, and for an additional bullet, you can chain your Blast Dash midair into another Blast Dash. You can then press this button at the end of your animation to do the slam in your full burst combo, which you can follow up with this button to unload all of your remaining bullets into the monster's face. Our next skill is a choice between Quick Reload and Guard Reload, which are both activated by pressing this button and this button at the same time. Quick Reload is the standard reload animation that we've discussed previously that will reload all of your regular sized bullets, but none of your big bullets. This has a quick animation and is useful when paired with the full burst playstyle. Guard Reload allows you to reload while maintaining your guard. Additionally, this skill will reload both your worm stake and your shells. The caveat is that you will reload a smaller amount of bullets than your quick reload will. This primarily impacts the long and normal shelling gun lances due to how large their magazines are. Every time that you use guard reload, you will reload less shells than you would if you used the quick reload, which would reload all of your shells at once. This does not impact the wide gun lance, which normally holds three shells. In fact, wide gun lances will reload all three shells and their worm stake while getting the additional benefit of having a guard point whenever they reload. Our next set of switch skills adjust how your worm stakes function. And as mentioned previously, these are activated by pressing this button after manually shelling twice, or pressing this button after you've done the wide sweep in your full burst combo. Erupting cannon has you immediately blow your load the second that it's out of its sheath, just like a high school kid on prom night. When your animation is done, the tip of your lance will be set on fire, and your melee attacks will do more damage. This is the preferential playstyle for the full burst playstyle, as it will increase the melee damage component of your weapon. There is also one additional combo route for executing an erupting cannon for those of you who are trying to optimize your combo routes. Contrast the Erupting Cannon with the Wormstake Cannon. Wormstake Cannon ejects a payload into the monster, which after a short delay, will begin doing a set amount of damage. For normal and long shelling playstyles, you'll get multiple damage ticks, while the Wide Gun Lance, you'll get one big tick that also does KO damage if injected into the monster's skull. Now, it's time for us to move into Wirebug moves. We will first look at Hail Cutter, Ground Splitter, and Bullet Barrage, which are activated by pressing these two buttons at the same time. Hail Cutter sends your character skyward where they will immediately fill their magazine. Then you will rapidly descend from the sky and slam your weapon on the ground. From this position, you can press this button to activate your full burst and discharge all of your shells into the monster. While in the air, you can press this button and you will fire a charged shell, which is pretty neat. But like the late great president Theodore Roosevelt always said, why settle for shooting one thing one time when I can shoot one thing 14 times? Actual wisdom actually said from an actual person. Don't look that up. 
Ground Splitter is an attack where you drag your gun lance on the ground and somehow empower your shelling abilities. Personally, I like to think that there are some garden gnomes with a matchstick sitting at the tip of your lance to make sure that you get the flame effect in game. Does that explanation make sense? No, but neither does scraping fire residue off of the ground or a flaming penis with a killer chicken dance, so let's not pretend like we've started caring about realism now. The ground splitter has one initial hit and power armor meaning that you can soak one attack and still get the benefits of this ability. Our final ability is bullet barrage and this is the hunter's version of a final flash. We're all out of options, might as well execute the mega death maneuver by launching yourself forward rapidly, without hyper armor I might add, and unleash all of your shells, your worm stake, and your wyvern fire in one glorious explosion. And then get KO'd by the scorn magnum amalo. This is one of the coolest and hardest hitting moves in your arsenal, and long gun lances actually benefit a lot from this switch skill because their shells do more damage than normal and wide gun lances, and they get additional ticks of their worm stake, meaning that they will just do more hits than the other gun lance variants. Also, if you ever find yourself low on wire bugs, pause the game and then open up a copy of Excel and then just. Control C and Control V down the page, and there you go, a bullet barrage. Finally, we are left with the two wire bug skills activated by pressing these two buttons at the same time. Guard Edge is a counter ability that sounds like an illiterate politician trying to establish some sort of international American policy. Let me explain what I mean. This ability is a counter that actually increases your sharpness when you successfully block an attack. If our illiterate American politician used Guard Edge, we would also increase his or her sharpness and realize that by Guard Edge, they actually meant building a wall across the Mexican border. Once you counter an attack, Guard Edge has a few follow-up options. If you press this button, you will do your downward slam attack, which leads into your full burst combo. And if you press this button, you will transition directly into your worm stake. Guard Edge is a huge quality of life skill because one huge con about this weapon is that shelling chews through your sharpness on this weapon. This makes it so you don't have this awkward sharpening moment inside of your hunt because you can just use your guard point to sharpen your weapon. Reverse Blast is an inverse of the Blast Dash. You rocket propel yourself backwards, theoretically out of danger. I do not use this ability. This is probably a skill issue. But really, this move seems out of place with the defensive power that you have. There are a handful of knee situations where it would be helpful to run away, but in general, the wire bug would be better spent sharpening your weapon with a guard. Also, like all other good honest Americans, the gun lance has a core issue with mobility, so I don't want to give myself more ground to cover by running away. That'll mean I'll have to exercise my body instead of exercising my right to bear arms. Liberty, justice, and restoration, rapide. How dare you assault my ears with that French dialect. But the Statue of Liberty was given to us by the French. With all of the switch skills being covered, it's time to dive into the different play styles for the gun lance. Capcom has already explicitly spelled out the play styles with the differentiation between the shelling types, so I've got a switch skill loadout that makes sure you can use any shelling style that you want. And those play styles are the Path of the Screaming Eagle, Path of the Rolling Thunder, and the Path of the Corn. And you may be thinking, Path of the Corn sounds pretty stupid, but you better watch the fuck out before I introduce you to the Colonel. Path of the Screaming Eagle is a long gun lance playstyle that focuses on using bullet barrage and charge shelling to unload giant bursts of damage in one successful artillery strike. You may be wondering, why is it called Path of the Screaming Eagle? And that's because if you listen really closely, when you execute bullet barrage, you can hear the subtle sound of freedom echo throughout the land. Look. Look, listen in here. Path of the Rolling Thunder is a normal gun lancing playstyle that centers around executing as many full burst combos as possible. You'll be leveraging Erupting Cannon to buff your lance's damage since you'll be doing a considerable amount of non-shelling damage as well as Hail Cutter to transition your wire bugs into more full burst attacks. We will also be using Blast Dash to bridge the weapon's mobility issue and transition that movement option into a full burst option as well. And finally, Path of the Corn. Path of the Corn is a wide gun lance style that focuses on shelling and guarding against the monster's attack. Your main focus will be around maintaining uptime on your ground splitter shelling buff. You'll also be running guard reload to keep your guard points active as often as possible. You can also use Blast Dash to help cover your mobility issues. And for those of you complaining that this path doesn't have a super cool name like Path of the Screaming Eagle and Path of the Rolling Thunder, I'll have you know that nothing is more American than the humble ear of corn. 
Did you know that America is the largest producer of corn in the entire world? In fact, in 2021, the U.S. produced 383 million metric tons of corn. Corn is real money. And do you want to know what we do with all of that money? We made a shitload of weapons to systematically enforce truth, justice, and the American way on unsuspecting benefactors. Mostly benefactors who have oil. <laughs> Mostly benefactors who have oil. We're even trying to find ways to make our war machines run off of corn. So don't you dare shit on corn. Because those insults, they don't fall on deaf ears. They fall on deaf ears of corn. So, what path should you play? Honestly, all of these are super fun. So I'd recommend playing them all. They all have their perks. Wide Gun Lance is pretty vanilla and gives you a good feel for the weapon and is easy to get into. Normal and long, they add a little bit of flavor, but you can't go wrong with anything here. So, with that being said, let's grab our Second Amendment, our grossly overactive Patriot Gland, and our increasingly morbid gun violence statistics to go hunt some virtual dinosaurs. So you thought you could joke on the colonel. And look at you now, staring down the barrel of the best ear-based artillery that American money can buy. And there's no use asking for forgiveness now, brother. The only way that we're getting out of this is if there's blood that's been spilt on the ground. And I'll have you know, the only colors I bleed are red, white, and kablue. <laughs> well, well, well. Look at the big bully trying to take someone else's oil. I don't know if you got the memo, but the world's going green. I would watch what I was saying, son. Do you recognize that I have the finest corn-based artillery that American money can afford? And you, you don't even seem to have a weapon. Oh, don't I? Oh my god, he's beating my ass! 